The Frost, available to read on Tapas, an original story by Adam Snowflake. Chapter 1, Introduction The Frost, what can I tell you about the Frost? Lots of things, I'm sure. But basically it's evil, pure evil. It exists to consume. I'm sure somebody like Zone, who you will soon meet, would argue the Frost does not have an objective morality. But after what it did to my home, to my friends, I cannot see it as anything other than an inherent menace. The frost came from somewhere where we simply don't know, but it arrived. It definitely arrived. With its arrival, it brought death. Maybe that's a nice way to put it. With itself, it brought a standstill of time, not even the release of death, pure, frozen, everything. The frost came from the outer ring, BG. But... Why it seeks to consume everything as food is beyond me. I'm going to tell you a story. A story about a dimension known as the Meta. The Meta contains every single ounce of work that all share something in common. Let me know if you can guess it. I won't tell you the answer now, but I'm sure if you keep drudgingly reading the text, it will come to you. In the Meta exists over 14 different universes and realities over 17 different planes of existence, and over 6 trillion sentient life forms. It holds the universes that you often read about, the kind you stumble upon and fall in love with, it contains all your favorite characters and them going about their lives. In many ways, the meta contains literature itself. Not just any books, but books of a certain nature. When the frost started, it seeped into each of these worlds, consuming the narratives within them and chokeholding the characters of those realities erasing them from mortal memory and wiping the slate clean, making their stories never known. It feeds itself in this way. The frost. It consumes like this. Its only drive, if you could call it that, is to feed itself. It cares not how it gets its sustenance, only that it receives it. So that's what I'm dealing with. It's not fun. It's not even remotely interesting. It's hell. I wish I could start this off with a bang, or something remotely interesting to tell you, but all I can really say is that it's infected my home. I like to keep my narration at a distance, it's something I've always preferred, but in retrospect it seems something I can no longer control, the frost is coming for me. Soon it will also come for you. My name is Raven Reglar, daughter of a Nancy the Spider, more like a Nancy the Man. I'm 22 years old as of the writing here, I'm a convert, a rabbi, and a storyteller. This is the first time in my entire body of work I have even bothered to give my last name. This time I've mentioned myself beyond a simple, my name is Raven, and today's story is... Because if this thing keeps up, I will never get to tell another story. I will never see the day where I can recount to you the tales I grew up with. I will never again leave the meta. So, there's only one thing to do. I'm going to take the following book, The Adventures of Zone, and tear a page right out of it. I will place this page within the new book being consumed by the frost. The new book is called Chimera and the Happy Ending. Hopefully he'll do something about it. So let me start by saying I've always loved to read. That's something about me. It's one of the reasons I became a storyteller. Beyond a simple family resemblance. I love stories. It's what I do. This frost thing is ruining this passion of mine. It's ruining what I adore. I have a plan. Well, it's not exactly mine, but I do have an idea. Placing Zone in Chimera's world is just, I don't, I guess, a jumping off point. By placing his words on her page, he will essentially jump into her world, off his page into hers. Zone is a character I grew up reading about. He's from this stupid book of short stories. He's been handled by many different writers, each with their own take on him. I chose to put Zone here for one reason and one reason alone. He likes to help people. As I was reading Chimera's book, I saw a world where the pages and words on them changed before my very eyes. She chose to be consumed by the frost. She willingly died without a fight. I don't really know Chimera well. I picked the queen from my library. I'll research her as you find out what happens. Today, I take you into the frost. Chapter 2. Reader, meet Chimera. Chimera sat down accepting her fate. The frost began to eat at the table. It was climbing its way towards her. In a flash before her, the wall of her castle began to melt. A golden torr appeared within the ooze. Out of it came sauntering a fit, blonde-haired man in a light blue trench coat. He took a gun to the frost, shot at it, melting the table, and grabbed her by the hand. Come on! And threw her into the door. Inside the door, there was a sphere. 
There she saw galaxies among it. It was as if she had been planted in all of space itself. The ground beneath her where she was standing seemed non-existent, clear as day. Only galaxy after galaxy around her, and below her to her sides, a placed red chair within the nightstand in the middle of the scene existed. Who are you? What is this place? Her voice shook. My name is Zion, and I expect a thank you. A thank you? A thank you for what? He brushed his bangs to the side, playing with his hair. His voice was like that of a child's in its naivety. For saving you? What was that? Frost. It's consuming everything, I'm afraid. My name is Zone. I'm a traveller of planets, 2,034 years old. You are Queen Chimera of the Kingdom of Light, correct? The Kingdom of Lumiere? Same thing, Zone said. BG? You are from the year 203 BG, correct? BG? It's a classifier for your time period. Before the gate. What gate? Chimera said. Listen, I don't have much time, but that happy ending you won won't last if the frost continues. So you saved me from it? Well, by the looks of it, you were going to let it feed off you. Feed off me. The frost. It latches on to people, takes their adventures and consumes the world within. Anyone of any notoriety is quickly consumed by it, filling the discussion further. You were just about to let it eat you. I don't understand what you're saying. I'm saying that the world that you are known for, it exists in what we call the Met. In the Met, each world is attached to someone of note. Its reality, its very fibre of its being, is connected through that of which it becomes known. You are quite the famous queen in your world, the Kingdom of Lumia, and you are a part of the Met. In English. You are known. You are personal notoriety. Whether good or bad, you are famous. The Kingdom of Light is famous to you. Okay. And because of that, you share a certain... Zone began to make a noise and move with his... Zone began to make a noise and move his hands. Frequency. This frequency connects you to this great thing called the Met. You are the representative of your world, I'm afraid. And because of that, the frost chose to consume you. Had I not saved you, the entire world in which you exist would be taken hostage, thrown into an eternal dark ice age. Oh, shit. Yes, Zone said. Oh, shit. He continued to play with his hair. My name is Zone. Saving people's what I do. I work in the shadows. I have worked within them for centuries. I travel millennia and galaxies. I chose to save you because I was nearly consumed by the frost myself. But given I'm real, that would mean all of creation as well. So you saved me because I saved you because I don't want that thing eating any more people. I'm composing a team. A team, Chimera scoffed. Yes, a team to save the world. I don't want to be a part of this. You have no choice, because if you don't, the frost will continue. It will eat away at your world and everybody else's. And then it will expose itself beyond the Met, consuming the very fabric of reality. Not just your reality, but my reality, their reality. Everyone and everything will cease to be, only leaving that of the frost and its dying hunger. Everything will end. Chimera held her gloved hands. She adjusted the tiara on her head. Chimera was dark-skinned, black and race, with frizzy hair and a purple ball gown, laced with fine gold edges. A long time ago she was considered evil, where she came from many people bowed down to her but only out of fear. Though entering a special competition to give her one wish, she was able to reset not only her reputation but the kingdom in which she dwelled, bringing her kingdom and her people known as the Kingdom of Fonts into the realm of light and prosperity. She was hardly a political figure, yet she ruled with an iron fist. She wasn't some misunderstood puppy dog. Where she came from, she was villainized, and while she felt it unjust, it was for good reason. Many deemed it right. She lived in fairy tale, a world consumed by myths, fabrications, happy endings, and black and white moralities. She was known for the competition. It was a show that aired everywhere in fairy tale, even recounted as a turning point of the century by some historians. That was where her fame lied. She had a terrible reputation, and it was well deserved. She'd be considered by most people in their tellings to be that of a villain, only bothering to waver after her very own happy ending. Zone, on the other hand, was a savior of worlds. He was a boy genius, raised in the galaxy of Orion. He danced the dance of the mage. He even learned to achieve immortality by solidifying himself across different vessels through time and space. He was quite well known as a traveler of the stars. He was, by many definitions, a hero. He traveled those galaxies through a magic key which could unlock a door to anywhere, anytime. All it required was a thought and will. He would be what most people would classify as a wizard, though that of the future day. 
pompous and arrogant in some regards, full of intellect and childlike wonder in others. He was smart, though he tended to often go off and ramble to the enemy's visitor. He was blond, olive-skinned man with bangs covering his burned right eye. He wore suspenders and a light blue trench coat. Inside the coat were many buttons and nozzles, that of which served a magical purpose, one of which was a bright orange button, and it could translate the language of anybody he touched. His adventures were widespread in some regards. Not every soul knew of him, and he was often used aliases to escape the wrath of some distinctions he came across. Zone was a fan of fairy tale. He traveled there many a century. He loved mythology and stories. He especially enjoyed the stories that weren't about him. He had seen the show she partook in, while a guilty habit, Zone did enjoy reality television. He admired Chimera. That was the real reason he chose to save her. He was a fan, a fan from another dimension and another galaxy, but he was a fan. Absurd sat drinking his tea. He held his staff at the frost. It began to twist and twirl until a giant statue made of it appeared before him. It stopped clawing at him, frozen in figure. He was looking at it. He touched it to his staff and it rotted. Fascinating, Absurd said. The wall began to melt and within it a golden door appeared. Best I do this by myself, Zone said to Chimera and Florist. Too many people raise heads. Understood, Zone walked out. I've been expecting you, Absurd said. Zone blinked several times. I'm sorry? I said, Absurd set his rotting staff down among the statue of the frost. He got up from his sitting position to meet Zone, making eye contact. I've been expecting you. However, Zone, this is not what I presumed you to look like. You know my name. I know everything, Absurd smiled. Tell me, is this Aegeon, the god of the wind? I don't use that name. I am really a magician. Truly, there's no reason for secrets among two mages. I beg to disagree, Absurd said. You can drop the accent. I know you well. You do, I said. Drop the accent, Zone repeated. This form comes with an accent. Does it now? I wasn't aware masks operated that way. They do, Absurd passed. Here, they do. Well, can you change the mask? No, I refuse. Also, I'm guessing you've come to me about the frost. Absurd gestured to the giant statue within his home. You don't seem very panicked, Zoner counted, walking around the thing, looking it up and down. What good is panic in magic? Absurd pondered. It was a genuine sort of ask. You should be, given what this is currently doing to your world. Zoner stopped circling the thing, meeting Absurd's gaze. It's doing this to everyone's world. Maybe so, Zone said, raising a brow. So are you willing to help? I think there's one more person you should ask from this dimension. And who is that? Pebona. The famous bandit. I heard she was a tyrant. <laughs> Absurd laughed. If standing up for the marginalized is tyranny, I certainly wish I was a tyrant. She's political, Zone remarked, unamused. She's powerful. Absurd retorted. She's a good person, and honestly, given your character, I'm surprised politics aren't something you've amused. Zone sighed. Fine. Where can I find her? The Red Tower. I thought that was home to... Yes. Like I said, Pebona is a good person. The Frost has already made its way to her kingdom, we best hurry. Zone played with his hair. Fair enough. You can bring your friends. I know they are hiding behind the cavern. Cavern? No. The door is a gateway to my home. I see. Absurd walked up to the door. <coughs> Knocked on it. Out of it came Queen Chimera and Flora Cheng. A girl. A non-binary teenager, Zone said. You're bringing children into this. Zone was bitter. I thought you do know that's dangerous. Last I checked, most of your apprentices were children. That's different. Flora looked at the door as the voices talked over it. Okay, girls, can we please get on with stopping the frost? Chimera teased. Right, we have one trip to make. I didn't expect to travel, Chimera snapped. Well, you're welcome to stay behind. This is us getting on with it. I will. Chimera crossed her arms and walked back into the doorway. I'll be here when you get back, she slammed the door. She's not exactly a team player, Floris commented. Yes, I can see that, Absurd said. Florist, Floris Chang. Floris reached out her arm to greet Absurd. Absurd? Absurd, yo. 
Absurd shook it. <laughs> what a weird name, Floris chuckled. I get that a lot, Absurd said. Absurd was a chubby green-haired man from the Kingdom of Eights. His world was that of an ancient fantasy, technology and magic coexisting similar to zones. Absurd was a great magician known as a laughingstock around many parts. He was a fighter who couldn't fight, a monk who couldn't monk, a hunter who refused to spear. That being said, he was far more powerful than he ever let on, someone of great renown under other faces. He was quite similar to Zone in that way. Zone had originally taken note of Absurd while working in the Zanto dimension. He had written several grimoires under a falsified name. He was one of Zone's favorite authors, though Zone would never admit to that. Zone had a tendency to hop from reality to reality, to travel between worlds and dimensions. In many ways, it put him on equal leveling with the Frost. It was why he alone was the one to gather a team. Zone was immortal. He hadn't always been. But when you've been around for just that long, you tend to get bored. Traveling dimensions and planets, in many ways, was his way to quake that. His boredom. Zone stood amongst the tower. Floris walked out to the door and knocked. Zone looked at her. You can't just knock, Zone said. Just did, Floris smiled. They heard a sudden yelling and a red-cloaked purple girl with mint-green hair greeted them. Oh, cut it out, Sungwoo, Zone said with a wave. The bandit took a few steps back and removed her mask. How'd you know it was me? Who hasn't heard of the political paybona? Zone retorted, unamused. So you know who I am? Are you members of the Tights? Actually, we're just travelers, Zone said. We have with us a wizard of your ilk. Ilk? Pavona scrunched her face upon hearing the phrasing. You're, she said, unable to finish upon seeing Absurd. Absuada, but you can call me Absurd. I'm a fan of your work, Miss Tyrant. I didn't know you talked funny. It is an accent, Absurd said, pushing to his belly and making light of the conversation. Are you? Yes. But now is not the time to talk rebellions. Now is the time to focus on the frost. Is that what's been eating my people? Judging by your tower, you are not here by choice. You could say that. So we're on the same side? Exactly, Absurd said with a wave of his staff. The world around you is freezing. Time itself has seemed to stop. There is this sentient thing called the frost devouring worlds. Your revolution, your planning, is second hand to this. Nothing second hand to the tights, Pebona snapped. I agree, revolution is good, but you need a living world for that to occur, and as I am sure you have seen, your world is far from living since the plague of a beast and its cold fast stormed through. Pebona was hopeful in her tone, looking to absurd for answers. Then what do we do? I'm composing a team, Zone interjects. A team to stop the end of the world. We travel through this key on my neck. It's like Pandora's box. It can take you anywhere, any time, any planet. We've been using it to rescue people from the frost. Come with me, come with me, Pebona gestured. Up the large staircase, absurd Chimera and Zone leapt. Finally, they were taken to a darklit room. A dragon was crying incoherently in pain. This is Petunia. The dragon continued its weep. Zone moved in. Absurd stopped him with an arm. She was half icicle. I jokingly say that, but her body was practically a lifeless corpse covered in blue ice, bloody underneath. Her veins were showing through her nozzle, and her eyes were beady, veiny, and dead-looking. Can you save her? Pibona held the unaffected part of her dragon's head and looked towards Absurd for guidance. I'm afraid it's already gotten her. Pretty soon she'll cease to be, ridden out of existence, no longer a part of the met. That's not fair, Pibona snapped. Absurd was humble. Life's not fair, that's why we need your help. So what happens to Petunia happens no more. Now step away, she's about to be consumed. Pibona sat her dragon's head down and gently took a few steps back. Her dragon's body seemed to contort and twist until finally it collapsed in on itself and her dragon was no more. Pibona's eyes watered, but no tears could be seen. I... Pibona paused. You're already starting to forget her, Zone whispered. Yeah, it's weird. She was like my best friend, and now... Absurd spoke up. You and me are known through the eights. Did the frost try to nip at you? Yeah, Pibona put her hand to her head. Something took the fall from me. Your dragon, Pibona asked. Yeah. <sighs> Floris sighed heavily. Flores Chang was a girl from a unique world, a girl from a land of a realistic dystopia. Flores Chang was a normal girl. She was from a Thailand in which America was separated into kingdoms based on gender identity and sexual orientation. 
She was trying to unite the kingdoms as a whole. She was at Akil's house when the frost began to consume. Andre, somebody quite close to her. Soon it got to Patter, her shabby friend. All of her rebellion was struck with the frost until Zone, much like with Chimera, however late, blasted in to save her. Flora's diary, the one she kept, was what her world became known through. The frost wasn't targeting her friends, though I'm sure it got a huge meal out of them. No, it was targeting Florist. The girl or demi boy, whatever she wants to be called. It was targeting her. She escaped, but the world, the Kingdom Diaries, that universe vanished. Somehow, Flora still remembers. Maybe because she was supposed to be the final key. Regardless, Floris lived in a dystopia, a world of segregation. Zone knew it risky, taking someone so mundane, boring, and ordinary. But she was a heroine, a revolutionary, a girl however young with many allies under her belt. Someone who tried their best to save the day, even if they failed in other areas. That's what Zone liked about Florist. The frost was consuming every world, so Zone, being the character he was, decided to save his favorites, the ones he loved, the idols he worshipped, the kids he noticed when he visited their dimension. Yes, Flores Chang, the chubby dummy boy, was far from unique, but she knew just by looking at her that she'd be perfect. The perfect candidate to stop the frost, even without superpowers, without some fantastical narrative like everybody else he recruited and was accustomed to, a girl from a real world, without magic, without powers, without being some big brain magician like himself or absurd. That is why Zone chose to save Flores Chang. Unfortunately for us, this occurred before the story began. God, what I would have given to see the look on her face as he saved her. The frost, while almost sentient, almost thinking, can be held off. It takes a lot to do it. Zone made himself a makeshift heat gun, and he's been using it as of late, shooting the frost with waves that can mirror a volcano. So you're on board? Zone asked, almost emotionless. I believe so, but when we're done here, Pibona turned to absurd. I expect aid for the tights. <laughs> absurd laughed. We'll cross that rainbow road when we come to it, Pibona shook Absurd's hand. Oh, but first let me change back into my standard uniform. Pibona removed her scarlet robes that seemed heavy upon creating dust as they hit the floor. She wore a black crop top and pink suspenders. The suspenders were the same that Absurd wore, but nicer, almost gold in quality despite being pink. Much better. Let's go. End of chapter two.